Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, Test Automation Mantras. In today's video, I have covered another BTD testing framework, Specflow using C Sharp. So in today's video, I have covered installation, setting up the application under test, writing features and scenarios, and reporting. We will require VS 2019 or VS 2017 for today's video. You can install from Microsoft website. Now let's create a simple project. I'm selecting class library to create today's project. Now we can enter the location of your project and you can enter your project name. I'm using Specflow calculator and same name is used as the solution name. Click on next. Select the target framework .NET 5 photo and click on create. Once you click on create, it will create a solution and the project under it. It takes a while to create the solution and project. Let's wait for it. There you go. So we have a class created as class 1.cs. Remember, for today's video, we are using calculator as an application under test. So let's set up our application. Rename the class as a class, cal class 1 to calculator.cs. Once you have done, the simple application we are testing is adding two numbers. First, let's declare two, two variables uh, to be the first number and for the second number. Now we'll create a method as add and that will contain the implementation for addition of two numbers. As of now, let's not worry about the implementation. So we'll just um, create the method and throw an exception uh, as implementation is not being done yet. So we'll come back to that, do it later. All done. Now it's time to install the extension for Specflow. So go to extensions, manage extensions, search for Specflow under online. Once you search it, I'm using 2019. So you will see Specflow for 2019. If you're using 2017, you will see 2017. There will be download button here. Select that and close. It takes some time for the installation. Re restart your VS 2019 or 2017 to take that effect. Now it's time to uh, create our test project. So let's go to solution, right click, go to add, click on new project. And since we are adding a test project, that'll be Specflow project, search for Specflow. Click on Specflow project and click on next. It will add the test project into our solution. So the new project create is Specflow calculator project. We have to add the dependency to our calculator um project here because we need to access the application once that's done uh, we will require to see our test so go to the view uh, to add the test explorer select test explorer from here this is to see all the tests now uh, to see all the tests let's build we need to build and clean the project so let's clean up first and build the project uh, so if we are building solution, you can build individual project or build the solution in uh, one go. So building solution is successful. Let's go and select our first test. Just remove the unnecessary um, the lines from the feature file. We change the tag name as calculator since the application we are testing is calculator. And this is the step definition file. We have not yet done any implementation. So once we try to run our test, you will see there is a warning on these tests. And if you look at the details of the output, you can see the step definition is pending for implementation and all of other steps are skipped. Before you can run the test, you will require to activate the Specflow runner uh, with your login details. So please follow the steps to activate Specflow runner. Once you have activated the Specflow runner on your machine, now it's time to do the step implementation. So let's go to our step definition file and try to implement the steps. We'll require to access all the members of the calculator class. So let's create an instance of the class. So we're creating instance of the calculator class here. You can see a red and line on the calculator. So let's import the assembly for calculator class. Now use the instance of the calculator class to access the first number. So let's try to access first number here. And number we are passing from the feature file, if you remember the first number and the second number, we are passing input from the feature file steps. 
So the int number is coming from the feature file. Let's um, get the second number. And we are passing that the calculator class. Now third is adding the number. So now we need to access the add method and it's time to implement the add method. So for implementation is simple, the addition of two numbers and we are returning um, the sum of these two numbers. So let's finish the implementation. Now go back to the step, step implementation class and now under the add two numbers step definition, we will just access the add method. Now we will store the results into a, another variable as results. Let's declare the variable on top. So it will be like a private variable because we are using only in this class. All done. Now it's time to assert that whether our calculation is correct or not. So there is a assertion library uh, we will be using here to assert. So the results coming from the calculation as well as what we are passing from the feature file as an expected result. So that both the numbers should match here. Now let's try to read on our test and it should pass. There you go. So number is success successful. If you want to see the implementation, you can still go to output and look for the details on every step. Now let's uh, create another method as a subtract. So we're creating another method where we want to say um, number one minus number two and get the output and validate that. So first number is, we already have first number, second number. Now let's go to feature file, create another feature as testing the subtraction of two numbers. So I'll just copy and paste the same for add numbers. Now we will change the numbers and the expected values here. So first number is 70, second number is 50, and the two numbers are subtracted instead of addition. Now results should be 20. So that's our feature file, what we created for subtraction. Now go and generate the step definition. As you can see, you can right click on the steps and whichever is missing, you can generate the step definition from here as well. You can copy to clipboard, copy and paste to the file where you want to. So let's do that. So we'll go to the end. So it's addition of two numbers. Similar to that, we got the subtraction of two numbers. Copy and paste. And now let's implement the step. So instead of addition, now we will be using the subtract method, what we created in the application under test. So replace add to subtract. We don't need to change in expectations because the same results what we are calculating is just different numbers and different calculation. Now you have to build, clean and build again to see the another test in the list. So let's rebuild the solution. You can see there is an error. And if you look at that feature file already contains a scenario with the same number. So we didn't change the scenario name. So that's why the test failed. So just remember when we're creating scenarios, it has to be a unique name. So let's change the scenario, subtract two numbers, save it and try to rebuild the solution again. Now it's succeeded. If you go to the test, you can see the test explorer shows the additional number. Let's try to run the second test, subtracting two numbers. And it passed. So our test, if you want to see the details. So this is beautiful reports gets generated after you finish the uh, test execution. So specflow generates this test report uh, in your project directory under test results folder. You can open it from there. It shows like a great summary. The other way to generate is uh, leaving docs. You have to go to command line. And first we need to install um, 
uh, install the Living Docs library uh, via the command line tool. So .NET tool install hyphen hyphen global specflow plus Living Docs .cli. I'll show you in a while what specflow does. Looks like I already have installed it. So I'll just navigate to the directory where the files are. So you need to go to bin debug and .NET 5.0. That's the path. And let's generate the spec doc, spec flow docs now. Spec flow docs are generated successfully. It's HTML document. Let's go to that part and open the document. Now it contains this uh, living documentation tab. It contains the two tests what we created, including all the scenarios and its steps. This beautiful report shows all pass and fail details as well. Now you can filter the results if you want to. There's another tab analytics. It shows the graphs in terms of pie chart with feature scenarios and steps. You can see we created two scenarios, eight steps. 